We have uh, an amazing, amazing feast this afternoon. I believe that God has prepared something not maybe delicious for some, but I believe we all need to hear this message because I consider this message to be one of the most important messages that I need to deliver to you because as your pastor, I care for you. Amen. We love you. I love you personally. Amen. Hallelujah. Aww. Amen. And I know you love me too. And we all need to hear this. Amen. For the past few weeks, I don't know if you noticed, mula pa dun sa topic natin, Vision for Victory, and saying no to oh no last uh, Sunday, uh, it, see, it seems like God wants us to come ta sa book of Nehemiah. I don't, I don't actually plan in doing that. Pero for some reason, ayaw akong paalisin ng Lord sa Nehemiah. So, uh, ang naisishare ko lang naman sa inyo yung nire-reveal din sa akin ng Panginoon. So, uh, I believe God has a plan for us and hopefully makatulong po ang mensaheng ito sa bawat iyo sa atin. How excited are you to hear the message of the Lord this afternoon? I'm so excited. Yung side na to, excited. Sana maging stereo, no? Hindi lang left, meron ding right. Hallelujah. Mas maganda ako surround. <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 13 to 17. Ang sabi rito, Therefore, I, referring to Nehemiah, stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up because the people at that point, kasi nga, destroyed ang kanilang walls, mababa ang kanilang moral, there have been so many oppositions and rejections, so many threats at that time, and yung kanilang mga workers, the merchants and perfume makers were afraid sa mga kaaway nila. But bilang leader, tumayo si Nehemiah to encourage the whole crowd. And ang kanyang crowd is composed of nobles, officials, and sabi rito, and the rest of the people, and sabi niya, don't be afraid of them. In other words, don't be afraid of your enemy. Huwag kayo matakot kung may threat. Huwag kayo matakot kung may opposition. And I believe, 4,000 years later, nandito tayo ngayon, same message ang pinipreach ng Panginoon sa atin, don't be afraid. Kung ano man ang kinakatakutan mo sa bahay, huwag kang matakot ang sabi ng Panginoon sa atin, don't be afraid of your enemies. Kasi yung bagay na kinakatakutan mo on the, on the other side of your fear, there is, de- there is your destiny. On the other side of your fear is your blessing. On the other side of your fear is your breakthrough. You won't see that breakthrough if you will not face your fears. Kaya sabi ng Panginoon sa atin, don't be afraid. So how would I do that? Remember the Lord. He's great and He is awesome. Ang Panginoon natin ay dakila. He's perfect. He's awesome. So kung natatakot ka sa buhay, ang payo ni Nehemiah sa atin, alalahanin mo lang ang ginawa ng Panginoon sa iyo. Alalahanin mo kung sino ang Diyos mo. Alalahanin mo na ang Diyos mo ay great and awesome because sometimes God is allowing yesterday's problem so that we will have wisdom for our today's problem. Inaalaw ng Panginoon ang mga problema ang pinagdaanan mo ng 2018 para pagpasok ng 2019, may panibagong wisdom tayo para hapin ang mga susunod na problema sa ating buhay. Hallelujah! Sabi niya, remember the Lord who is great and awesome and I love this part, and fight for your families. Fight for your sons. Remember, kung matatakot kayo sa kanila, anong kakasapitan ng ating pamilya? Anong kakasapitan ng ating mga anak? Your daughters, your wives, and your homes. And when, when our enemies heard that we are aware of their plan, in other words, nung nalaman ng mga kalaban na nabuko sila sa kanilang plano to kill us, and that God had frustrated it. I love that part. Ibig sabihin, kakampi talaga nila ang Panginoon. Kasi kung hindi man natatakot yung kaaway, sa mga merchants and perfume makers, obviously, takot sila sa Diyos. And God frustrated their plans. Pinigil, inabort ng Diyos ang plano nila to kill these people. And sabi niya, and since the enemy heard that we are aware of them, we all returned to the wall, to our project, and each to our own work. And verse 16, so it was from that time on that 50% of my servants work at construction, while 50% hold their spears, their shield, bows, and wore their armor, and the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. And verse 17, And those who built on the wall, and those who carried burdens, loaded themselves, so that with one hand they work at construction. Sabi niyo, one hand, and with the other hand they hold a weapon. I love that scene. Sabi niya, dahil takot sila sa threat, pero kailangan nilang tapusin yung wall, 
ang naging diskarte ni Nehemiah, okay guys, humawa kayo ng martilyo sa kanan to build the wall at humawa kayo ng espada to defend yourself from the enemy. I want you to build the wall and be alert about the enemy. For the next three years, I want to talk to you about on this for the next two days, I want to talk Okay, for the next few moments, I want to talk to you about on this subject, build and fight. Build, sabi sa katabi mo, build and fight. I don't know, I'm excited to preach this. I, I've been, uh, this is my fourth time I've been preaching this subject, but I'm excited, mga kapatid. Build and fight. Actually, we're talking about the story of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a prophet, and uh, based on the teachings that we've learned for the past two weeks. And by the way, we have a Spotify account na pwede nyo marinig yung preachings natin two weeks ago. We have been preaching about Nehemiah. We've known na si Nehemiah was an influencer. Kung meron siyang social media account, obviously marami siyang followers. Meron din siyang mga posers. May mga tao na nagpe-pretend because he was an influencer. But aside from being an influencer, he, is also, he was also a cup bearer. Ang ibig sabihin ng cup bearer, bago uminom yung hari, iinumin niya muna. Bago kumain ng hari, kakainin niya muna yung pagkain ng hari. In other words, malapit siya sa hari. Pero si Nehemiah, although working for the king, actually he was working for the enemy. Kasi yung Israelites have been in captivity of the Babylon at lahat ng best and the brightest of Israel were forced to transfer from Jerusalem all the way to Babylon. Lahat ng best and the brightest, kasama si Daniel, kasama si Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, at kasama nga na, na nga si Nehemiah. But, but true to his word, ang pangako ng Diyos, after 70 years, pinalaya sila ng Diyos. And after 70 years, yung first batch ng mga, ng mga Israelites umuwi sa Jerusalem, second batch umuwi sa Jerusalem, but to their surprise, nadat na nila ang kanilang city na wasak na wasak. Ang walls wasak, ang mga bridges wasak, and even the wall which serves as their protection were completely destroyed. Naawa si Nehemiah, nalungkot siya sa kalagayan ng kanyang bayan, kaya nung nabalitaan niya, nag siya ng leave of absence sa kanyang boss. Alam sabi niya, boss, mag file lang ako ng vacation leave for two months. Wow. Sabi ng boss sa kanya, no problem. Bigyan ka ng entourage, bumalik siya, at pinatawag niya yung mga ordinary men. And by the way, Nehemiah was just an ordinary man with an extraordinary purpose and extraordinary work. And I believe that's an encouragement for all of us na kahit gano tayo ka-ordinary, meron laging extraordinary plan at extraordinary na assignment ng Panginoon sa bawat isa sa atin. So tinawag niya yung mga merchants, perfume makers, mga wala namang kaalam-alam sa construction, pero na, uh, na-compel niya ang mga ito para i-rebuild yung wall. For more than 100 years, 114 years to be exact, walang nag-i-initiate na i-rebuild yung wall. Pero yung hindi kayang gawin ng 114 years, nagawa nila in 52 days, record-breaking. And the wall was rebuilt. Pero hindi ibig sabihin na nagawa nila in 52 days, ay eh wala silang oppositions. Oppositions were there. Setbacks were there. Threats were there. Pero hindi nagpadaig si Nehemiah sa threat. Hindi nagpadaig si Nehemiah sa setback. Hindi nagpadaig si, ne- nagpadaig si Nehemiah sa oppositions because Nehemiah had an assignment. At ang kanyang assignment is to rebuild the wall. And I believe you and I, if you consider yourself to be a Christian and you believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we all have an assignment. Have, present tense. We have an assignment. Ikaw at ako ay may assignment, mga kapatid. There is a reason kung bakit kakrinayit ng ating Panginoong Diyos. May rason ng Diyos kung bakit nilagyan kanya ng talent. May rason ng Diyos kung bakit kanya nilagyan ng skills. He deposited something in your life at hindi niya yung ginawa for no reason. May rason ng Diyos kasi may assignment na ipinapagawa ang Diyos sa'yo. I don't know about you, but I'm so inspired with Nehemiah's life. I'm so inspired with his leadership. Kasi sa pamagitan ng leadership ni Nehemiah, pinatunayan niya sa atin na anumang assignment na pinapagawa sa'yo ng Diyos, kaya mong tapusin. Na anumang sinimula ng Diyos, kaya mong tapusin. Nakaka-inspire siya kasi yung sinimulan niya, tinapos ang Panginoon. Nakaka-inspire ang kanyang buhay kasi sa pamagitan niya, pinatunayan niya sa atin mga kapatid that we can do what God assigned us to do. Yes. And I believe I'm on an assignment ngayong araw na ito to tell each one of you. I believe meron akong mission ngayong hapong ito para sabihin ko sa inyo that we have an assignment. We have an assignment to build and to fight. We have an assignment to build and to fight. May assignment tayo para humawak ng martilyo at ng espada. Amen? 
But if you're focusing so much on building and forget the fighting, we must wake up right now because we have an assignment not just to build, but to fight. Amen. Sabi ng Psalms 127 verse 1, unless the Lord builds, builds, builds the house, the builder's labor are in vain. And unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stands watch in vain. In other words, ang sabi sa atin, Kung ikaw ay nagbibuild ng something, if you're building your house, literally, or building your homes, literally, unless the Lord is in it, the, your labor is in vain. Mas masakit sa Tagalog. Kapag wala si Lord sa anumang binibuild mo sa buhay mo, lahat ng effort mo walang saysay. Because ang sabi rito, if you want to build something, you must put God at the center of it. Ito ako, hindi ako karpintero, hindi ako architect. Medyo nakakayaman sabihin, pero konti lang ang mga lalaking katulad ko na hindi handyman. Hindi ako marunong mag-fix ng tubo, ng tubig. Hindi ako marunong mag... Alam mo yun, pag nagpalit ako ng, ng bumbilya ng ilaw namin, feeling ko ang muscles... Mus- uh, uh, feeling ko ang, ang, ang tasa ng tingin ko sa sarili ko nun. <laughs> hindi katulad na iba, nakakahanga. Lahat kaya nilang gawin. Masira electric pan nila, aayusin nila. Ako, pag nasira electric pan, bumili na tayong bago. <laughs> hindi ako handyman eh. Kaya ko mag-assemble ng computer, kaya ko mag-build ng program sa computer, kaya ko gawin yun. At least, tingin ko kaya ko pa. Tagal-tagal na rin kasi yun. Pero pagdating sa building a house, let alone magtayo ng sariling bahay, di ko kaya. Napakarami namin nating members sa church, architect, engineers, construction workers, magaling sila sa pag-build ng something and they know exactly what I'm talking about. That if you want to build a great building, you have to ask somebody who knows how to build it. So if want, I want to build my own house, wag niyo ipagkatiwala sa akin ng design, ang engineering aspect nito. Because if I want to build great homes and great houses, I need to ask somebody that knows how to build. And if you are building a relationship, you need somebody who knows exactly what to do. Do you, do you agree what I, with what I'm saying, mga kapatid? Wow, I have a good news for you though. Ang good news ko sa inyo is this. God is in the business of building lives. God is in the business of building relationship. God is in the business of building marriages. God is in the business of building homes. And if I were you, I would ask God to help me build my relationship. Because unless the Lord builds the house, the builder's labor are in vain. And what a good news, mga kapatid, that the Lord is building it. Yes, the Lord is building it. Yes, the Lord is helping you to build the relationship. But, here you go. But there is a labor involved. Look at this. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builder's labor. Yes, the Lord is building it. But your labor is involved. Yes, the Lord is building the relationship. But it takes two to tango. Gusto i-build ng Lord a relationship mo, but you have to be intentional about building it. I've been married to Jenny for six years. More than six years. And uh, one thing I've learned in relationship is that relationships can be very challenging. F- friendship relationship, sons and daughter relationship, sibling relationship rather, mother and father relationship, all relationships are challenging. Agree, disagree. Agree. And if you want your relationship to work, you have to work. Let me rephrase. You have to work if you want the relationship to work. Iba kasi yung may kaibigan ka ng 8 years, sa may asawa ka ng 8 years. <laughs> Just FYI. <laughs> Hindi porke may kaibigan ka for 8 years, eh, alam mo na ang pakiramdam ng may asawa for 8 years. Because kahit kasal ka na for 50 years or 5 years, even the happiest couple in the world are experiencing problems, trials, difficulties. Kahit yung pinakamasayang couple na kilala ninyo, meron niya mga pinagdadaan ng pagsubok. Kaya nga ang suggestion ko sa mga single dyan, mag-ingat-ingat kayo bago magpakasal. Ipag-pray niyong mabuti bago kayo magpakasal because marriage is either wonderful or terrible. Kung kaya niyo mag-background check, mag-background check kayo. Sino na mga niligawan yan muna? <laughs> Hallelujah. Lalo pag nasa church. Hallelujah. Hindi <laughs> niyo alam kung sino kalaban niyo. Hallelujah. Marriage... <laughs> can either be wonderful or terrible. Sabi ng lumang kasabihan, marriage could be your greatest asset 
or your greatest liability. I recall you isang phrase na nabasa ko sa isang article na sabi doon, if you love well, you will live well. In other words, in other words, the, the, the quality of your life depends on the quality of your relationship. You can Facebook that, tweet that, Instagram that. Because <laughs> ang kalidad ng iyong buhay ay nakadepende sa kalidad ng iyong relationship. At katulad ng pagtatayo ng building, mga kapatid, if you want to build something better, if you want to build something, if you want to build your relationship, you need a building partner, not a building destroyer. Kapag yung kapartner mo, destroyer, ikaw builder, delikado kayo dyan. Ikaw nagbibuild siya, nagdi-destroy, ikaw nag-iipon siya, nagwawaldas, delikado yan. You need a partner na may pareho kayo ng vision, kaya nga importante kapag Christian ka, Christian din. Bakit? Kasi mag-iba talaga kayo ng vision. Baka ikaw, you're trying to build it. You're, you're trying to be spiritual. Pero yung kapartner mo ay hindi. Right. You need a building partner, not a building destroyer. Kaya kami ni Jenny, we've been married for six years. Hindi pa naman ganun katindi mga experiences namin. Pero napat natutunan ko na mga kapatid na you have to give in. Sometimes you have to give something to your wife. You have to be humble to him. Kasi iba pangangailangan niya sa pangangailangan ko. At iba yung pangangailangan ko sa pangangailangan niya. For many months, if not many years, sa pagsasama namin, masyado ako nakafocus sa mga bagay na dapat baguhin ng asawa ko, na nakalimutan kong mag-focus sa mga bagay na dapat kong baguhin sa sarili ko. Kasi minsan ang thinking natin, magbago ka, magbago ka, magbago kapitbahay ko, magbago teacher ko, magbago boss ko, pero never natin dinisar na magbago tayo. Amen. Sabi mo sa katabi, magbago ka na. <laughs> Walang gusto magpakumbaba. Lahat puro prideful. Pero, pero sabi niya, gusto ko maayos ang relationship, pero walang nag initiate na magayos ng relationship. Gusto ma-restore ang, ang relationship niya sa ama niya, pero walang gustong humingi ng tawad. Nobody wants to initiate. Sinishare ko nga sa couples conference yesterday na sabi ng Bible, Ephesians chapter 5, if you want to check, very clear sa atin na sinasabi ng Bible na ang pangangailangan ng mga lalaki is respect. Pangangailangan naman ng mga babae is love. Papansin nyo yung mga babae, sinabihan mo na ng I love you, kailangan mo pang ulit-ulitin. At kailangan hindi lang once a day. Because they want to feel secure. Hallelujah. Pag minsan wala ako, two days, sinasabi ko naman sa text na I miss you, I love you, pero pag uwi ko ng bahay, sasabihin niya, na-miss mo ba ako? <laughs> because I, I always have to assure Jenny na mahal ko siya. Sa lalaki, iba naman. We need to be respected. We need to be honored. Alam natin yun. Actually, kahit di kayo umatin, alam nyo na yun eh. Alam nyo na na ang lalaki kailangan ng honor and respect at ang babae kailangan ng love. Pero ang problema, walang gumagawa. Kasi ang katwiran natin, bakit ko siya mamahalin? Hindi nga siya marunong mag-submit. At sasabihin naman ng babae, ba't ako mag-submit? Hindi niya nga ako mamahal. Sila? Alam mo, kailangan mong mag-submit. Pero hindi ka nag-submit kasi hindi ka minamahal. Alam mo, kailangan mo mahalin ang asawa mo pero hindi mo siya minamahal kasi hindi siya nag-submit. Alam natin ang responsibilidad natin pero walang gustong mauna. Walang gustong maunang magpakumbaba. Kasi na-realize ko sa relationship namin ni Jenny, Kapag minamahal ko siya, nagsasubmit siya. Isa domino effect. So kung aantayin ko lang lagi na mahalin niya ako bago ko magsubmit sa kanya, puputi ang mata nating kakaintay. Walang mangyayari mga kapatid. Because at some point in our life, based on my experience, maybe not an absolute truth mga kapatid, pero based on the experiences and the counselings that I've been through, yung mga naghihiwalay na mag-asawa, kung meron lang isang magpapakumbaba, malaki ang chance na hindi matuloy ang paghihiwalay. Kasi ang gusto lagi natin madala sa relationship, kahit kaibigan pa yan, kahit nanay o tatay, gusto natin tayo ang boss. Ako ang boss dito sa relationship na ito. Nay, ako ang boss sa relationship na Dapat walang boss sa relationship kasi si Lord dapat ang boss sa ating relationship. If you want to make the most out of your marriage, you both have to be servants, not the boss. That's what we're trying to do. Kasi first year in marriage, Hindi naman kami nagsasama ni Jenny sa isang bahay bago kami ikasal. So, I don't really know her personally. And she doesn't really know me personally. Kaya nung, nung kinasal kami, ang, ang basihan namin yung sa mga Disney film. Lion King. Ba't Lion King? Aladdin. <laughs> Lion King. Ako si Simba. <laughs> anyway, excited na ako sa Lion King. Alam mo, pagpasok namin sa relationship, I have unrealistic expectations on her. And she had unrealistic expectations of me. Pareho pala kami nag expect 
napasayahin namin ang isa't isa, pero walang gustong magpasaya sa isa't isa. A expectation ko sa kaya, pasayahin mo ko. A expectation niya sa akin, pasayahin mo ko. Pero walang nag expect na papasayahin kita. Because nobody wants to initiate. And then I realized, hindi porke kailangan ko ng submission, kailangan ng wife ko ng submission. What she need is love. And all we need is love. Kantaya tayo. <laughs> and then I found out, and I made this theory, that marriage will kill you. Hindi ko yung babawin, totoo yan. Marriage will kill you. There's nothing spiritual here. Huwag kayo magantay. Marriage will kill you. Marriage will kill your self- selfishness. Marriage will kill your selfish desire. Kasi when you are married, 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 it's not about taking. It's giving. So, if I want our relationship to work, I have to build it the way God wants me to build it. Because that's what God wants. Ayan, yan ang kaibahan ng love tsaka ng marriage. Ang love is blind. Ang marriage, it's an eye-opener. Pag mahal mo palang bulag ka, pero pag kinasal ka na, bilat na mata mo. Ay, gano'n pala yun. Because we have this unrealistic expectation. I'll be sharing nga din sa, sa couples retreat yesterday. Sabi, meron ako nabasang story ang sabi doon, kapag daw ang lalaki, pinagbubuksan niya pa ng pinto ng sasakyan yung kanyang asawang babae. Dalawa lang daw ibig sabihin nun. Pag pinagbubuksan mo pa ng, ng pinto ng sasakyan yung asawa mo, either bago yung sasakyan o bago yung asawa mo. <laughs> because we have this mindset and preset, amen, na nung una, ako nagbibigay, eventually, when we got married, I have to take something. So in other words, if I want this relationship, kung gusto ko yung six years maging 60 years, I have to build it. And you know what? The good news is this. Hindi lang ako ang may concern ng ganun. God cares for our relationship. And God cares for your relationship. So a suggestion ko sa inyo mga kapatid, kapag may mga toxic, alam nyo buti pa yung katawan natin, pag may toxic, automatic na pinaflash ng katawan natin yung toxic. Kaya ka naiihi ngayon. Kaya tayo nadudumi, kaya tayo nagpapawis because our body was designed by God to eliminate toxins. Ang nakakalungkot, marami ka ng toxic people sa paligid mo, ayaw mo i-eliminate at i-flash. Toxic people will always result to toxic relationship. I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying na hiwalayan mo yung asawa mo kasi toxic. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is this, that God has placed these people around you because you have an assignment Sabi mo sa katabi mo, we have an assignment. It's not an accident, mga kapatid. So don't bother to ask me, meron bang formula, pastor, para mag-great ng, building, ng great families? No, there's no formula in building great families. Kasi in reality, ibang-iba na ang mga pamilya ngayon. Masyado tayong serious. Masyado na tayong busy. Masyado na tayong pagod. Wala nang tumatawa sa pamilya. Buti pa, pag sa barkada, kaya mo mag-joke, pero sa loob ng pamilya, hindi tayo nag-joke. Why so serious? And then nakakalungkot, maraming young people, hindi naman siguro lahat, mas excited pang mag, mag, mag-sleepover sa ibang bahay kaysa mag-sleepover sa sariling tahanan. Why? Because they are not excited sa kanila sariling tahanan. And you know what? Habang nakangiti ka, nakangiti, uh, habang nakangiwi ka, nakangiti si Satan. Habang nalulungkot ka sa nangyayari sa family mo, natutuwa si Satan because Satan's business is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But thank God, our God has a project of build, build, build. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ang project ni Lord, build, build, build. He, want to, he wants to build your relationship kasi walang family na immune sa storm. Walang family na immune sa trouble. Lahat tayo dumaranas ang iba't ibang troubles and pain and sadness sa ating buhay. Salamat talaga mga kapatid kahit may mga misunderstanding, may mga hindi pagkakaintindihan. Sinisikap natin to the best of our ability mga kapatid na ang plano ng Diyos sa ating pamilya ay maganap. Sabi nga ng Bible, as iron sharpens iron, so as one man sharpens the other. Kung paano ang, ang bakal ay kinikiskis sa kapwa bakal para tumalas at tumalim. Ikaw din minsan may kiskisan sa pamilya para isharpen tayo ng Diyos. Isipin mo lang lang yung asawa mo pang tasa. Isipin mo na lang yung asawa mo pang hasa lang yan ng ugalin. Hallelujah. Isipin mo na lang na yung kapatid mo hinahasa yung patience mo. Isipin mo na lang yung kapatid mo hinahasa yung karakter natin because as sh- iron sharpens iron, so as you <laughs> sharpen by the other. Kaya sabi ni Nehemiah, I know 
that we are building something great in here. Pero may mga atak ang kaaway. So what we will do? As sabi niya sa verse 17, Nehemiah 4, 17, as sabi niya rito, so ganito gawin natin, those who built on the wall, those who carried burdens, loaded themselves, so that in one hand, gumamit kayo na martilyo. Pero yes, we're so busy building it, pero hindi natin pwedeng i-ignore maraming kaaway. Maraming opposition. Si Satan was trying to steal, kill, and destroy. God wants you to build something. So sabi ni Nehemiah, habang hawak-hawak niyo ang martilyo, humawak na rin kayo ng espada sa kabilang kamay. Look at the picture. Build, fight. Build, fight. Because while you are building, you have to fight for your rightful place. Because Satan will attack your family. Satan will try to destroy your family. Tatanda niyo mga kapatid, sisirahin ni Satanas ang pamilya ninyo. Don't let that happen. Fight for your family. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, let's fight for our family. Let's fight for their salvation. Do you agree with that? Ipaglaban natin ang kanilang kaligtasan. Kung hindi pa sila ligtas, ipaglaban mo kasi gusto ni Satan na wag na silang bigyan ng opportunity maligtas. But fight for them. As you are building something, as you are growing in Christ, you have to fight for the, for the salvation of your family. Huwag ka papayag. Naalala ko si Noah, nung binigyan siya ng Lord ng assignment. Here you go. Assignment. At ang assignment ni Noah, gumawa ng ark. Kasi ang sabi ni Lord, for 40 days and 40 nights, uulan at babaha, hindi lang sa Malabon, kundi sa buong mundo. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> sabi, for 40 days and 40 nights, uulan at magbaba sa buong mundo. But I want you to build the ark because that ark will save you from destruction. Sabi niya, lahat ng mga, yung mga animals by pairs, seven pairs, ipasok niyo sa ark at kayo as a family, pumasok kayo sa ark. Tatlo anak ni Noah. Kanya-kanya asawa, bali six, pa sila mag-asawa, eight. Eight of them. By the way, eight is a number of redemption. Nothing accident in the Bible. Eight is a number of redemption. So eight members of the family ang naligtas sa ark. Habang punong-puno ng matitinding pagsubok at bagyo ang labas, may walong tao na niligtas ang Diyos. At alam niyo kung sino yung ark na yun, I believe that is a picture of Jesus Christ. Habang ang mundo ay sirang-sira at wasak na wasak, may somebody na nagligtas sa atin at kung pupunta ka lang sa ark, you will be saved. A picture of Jesus Christ. That, but there's a uh, very interesting exposition on 2 Peter chapter five, uh, chapter 2, verse 5, na sabi doon, the eight people who entered the ark was Noah. That's interesting. Sabi niya, the eight people who entered the ark was Noah. In other words, yung seven na una na sa ark, bago si Noah. In other words, Noah made sure na yung kanyang buong pamilya ay nasa ark bago siya pumasok. Now, it's serious. I say this respectfully. Distractions will come. Make sure that your whole family is in the ark. If it means that ikaw yung huling papasok, Pastor, inuunti-unti ko pa, Pastor. Baka unti-unti rin yung pagpasok mo sa langit, kamay muna. Naka, naintindihan ko naman, 10 years, unti-unti, okay lang yan. Unti-unti natin. Baka sakaling 30 years. Patay na. Dode na. But, but I believe, mga kapatid, while we are building something for the glory of God, I want us to make sure that our family is inside the ark. Listen to me. This is exactly why God called you to save your family. Let us make our families great again. Iligtas natin ang ating buong pamilya, mga kapatid. Whatever it takes. Magkaroon tayo ng ganung spirit. Whatever it takes, ililigtas ko sila. Hindi ko siya masira ng gospel kasi galit siya sa akin. So if it means na para masira ko siya, papatawarin ko siya kahit siya pa ang nagkasala. Whatever it takes, I will fight for my family kasi gustong-gusto ni Satan na hindi ka humingi ng tawad. At habang nakangiwi ka, nakangiting siya. So let us fight for our family. If it means that I have to resolve the conflict, I will do it. If it means that I have to forgive her, forgive him, I will do it. Because I will do whatever it takes. Because if you don't do it, you will live miserable lives. Don't do it, and you will live a miserable lives. But if you do, you will see the plans of God happen in your life. Satan wants to make your relationship miserable. Don't give him the luxury of seeing you having a miserable life na tinatawanan tayo ni Satan, I won't allow that. Let us fight for our families. Let us fulfill the vision that families are coming together in this church. 
trying to worship God. Why? Because we want, not just us, ang samang pakinggan mga kapatid, that we are saved on the ark, but our families are drowning outside and we can't even help them. We're on a mission. And our mission and our assignment is to save them. As parents, to save our children. As children, to save our parents. Introduce Jesus to them. Whatever it takes. Look at Job. Si Job, ang sabi dito, very interesting yung verse ito. Ang sabi ng Job 1.4, Job's son would take turns preparing feast in their homes. As they, and they would also invite three sisters to celebrate with them. But when the celebrations and tipar-tipar ended, party-party, sometimes, na 80 siya tayo, no? sometimes after several days, Job would purify his children. In, in Hebrew, Job will pray for his children. After ng party ng kanyang mga anak, after nilang gumimik, ang tatay magpipray. Para sa, hindi para sa kanyang sarili, para sa kanyang mga anak. Asabi ng next, he would get up early, gigising na maaga yung tatay, in the morning and offer a burnt offering. This is interesting. For each of them. Ilan ang anak ni Job? Ten. So every anak niya, magbibigay siya, mag, magbibigay siya ng burnt offering at magpipray siya para sa kaligtasan ng kanyang anak. At sabi dito, anong dahilan ni Job? For Job said to himself, perhaps my children have sinned and have cursed God in their hearts. So this was Job's regular practice. Sabi niya, Maaring ang mga anak ko nagkasala habang nagpa-party-party sila. So I will, be, I, will burn, uh, I will burn an offering para sa aking mga anak. Hindi si Job ang nagkasala, pero nagpe-pray siya para sa salvation ng kanyang anak. So, 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 so Job had a job. So Job had a J-O-B. What is the job of Job? By the way, ang Tagalog ng Job hindi gawa. Job then name she. So Job had a job. Ano ang job ni Job? To pray for his children. Now I believe as a parent, we have an assignment. What is our assignment? To pray for our children. As much as you can cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ. Alam mo sa totoo lang, ang gusto ni Satan lahat tayo mamatay prematurely. Gusto kanyang patayin sa hindi mo pa oras. So every time lumalabas kayo ng bahay, Pupunta kayo sa opisina ninyo, always pray. Hindi lang para sa inyong mga anak, para sa mga magulang nyo that God will cover them with the blood of Jesus. Ako, pag may kapamilya ako, wala pa sa bahay, nagdadrive pa, lagi sinasabi, mag-text kayo bago kayo umuwi because I've been praying for them. I want God to cover them. So I believe ang assignment ng mga parents is, Lord, protect my children. Lord, bless the work of their hands. Lord, give them pure thoughts. Kasi iba-iba na po mga thoughts nila ngayon, Lord. Puro moba na po mga thoughts nila, Lord. So give them pure thoughts. Give them the strength, Lord God, so that they can do whatever you want them to do. Lord, provide the needs of my children. I'm praying, Lord God, I will cover them. Araw-araw, Job is doing this regularly because he has a mission. We have an assignment, mga kapatid, to always pray for our loved ones. Lord, lead the way for my children. Lord, lead the way for my father. Lord, allow my children to grow in wisdom. Lord, allow my parents to grow in wisdom. Lord, allow my children to feel to be filled with your love. Pastor, old school na yan, 4,000 years ago pa yan. Well, yeah, old school, but still works. Amen. Prayer still works. Amen. Ang panalangin gumagawa pa rin. Amen? So why we are building something, glorifying the Lord, doing what God wants us to do, we are also called to fight for our families. So you have to fight for your family so that God will fight for us. Amen. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, fight! fight. Amen? As a parents, wag natin hayaan na iPad ang nagpapalaki sa ating mga anak. Don't allow our children na lumago at lumaki gamit ang iPhone. Hindi po iPhone dapat ang magpalaki sa kanila. I say that respectfully. Hindi dapat games ang inaalaw natin na magpalaki sa kanila. You have to be very strict if you are really intentional, mga kapatid and building great homes, and fighting for your family. Don't allow Hollywood to raise our children. Alam mo, ang assignment ng mga magulang, sabi ng Deuteronomy 6-7, ang trabaho ng magulang is to teach our children God's command. It's our job. Because hindi natural sa atin maging mabait. I- I- Ibang nga, hindi pa na-transform. <laughs> hindi natural. And, and, and honestly, at some point, medyo offended ako sa mga 
Nauna sa aking generation, actually kasama na rin ako, siguro kaya din ako offended kasi isa rin ako sa mga dating gumagawa nito. To be honest with you, I don't consider myself as a millennial. Ang survey, sabi nila, millennial para ako. Siguro based sa itsura and all of that, pero I, I think based on... <laughs> either millennial or memorial. It's, it's your choice. Right? <laughs> so, I don't, I, don't, I don't consider myself as a millennial. Kasi batang 90s and all that, medyo iba na yung thinking ko with, 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 compared to millennials. Pero I've done this too, and we're still doing it now. Galit na galit tayo ngayon sa mga millennials. Ang dami nating complaints about the millennials. Ang ah, mga millennials, mga tamal sila. Inuubos lang nila ang pera na. Ibang-iba yung mga kabataan ngayon sa mga kabataan namin. Kami noon, hindi kami ganyan. Sila ngayon, pahila-hilata lang dyan. Tapos pamoba-moba lang dyan. May project daw, pero nakahiga yung cellphone. Paano pa project? Nakahiga yung cellphone. Mga parents, tip lang po, pag nakahiga yung cellphone ng anak nyo, hindi project yan. <laughs> Tapos, ang lakas pa ng loob, sabi, ma, anong ulam natin? Tapos pagka hindi mo binigay, galit pa sila. Iba talaga itong mga millennial na ito. And I hate, I used to hate millennials as well. Pero the question is this, sino bang nagpalaki sa millennials? Pastor, kami din yun ah. <laughs> good, good. I mean, di ba tayo din? Kasi ang katwiran ng iba, siguro hindi kayo to, no? Pero yung iba ang katwiran nila. Anak, alam mo na bata ako. Grabe, baka pinagdusahan ko, pinagkirapa ko. Pag nagkakasala kami sa magulang namin, tatali kami sa puno. Tapos, isasako kami, lalagay, papakainin kami sa mga lagam, langgam, ginawa kami cheesecake ng mga magulang namin. Papakain kami sa mga langgam. Pero anak, dahil mahal kita, hinding-hindi ko yun gagawin sa'yo. Kasi mahal na mahal kita, anak. Ano anak, kumain ka na ba? Di pa po na ito, kumain ka anak. Magpakabusog ka, magpakataba ka. Gawin mo yan. Kalooban ng Diyos at tumaba ka, anak. Ano anak, gusto mo magpahinga? Magpahinga ka dyan, amiga ka dyan. Nay, naboboard ako. O, bilang kita iPad. Ilang gusto mo? Lima, limang, limang pad ng intermediate pad. iPad, iPad. <laughs> Amen? Tapos, pag gumawa ng mabuti, kayo talaga mga millennial. Iba ng iba na talaga ayo. Hindi na kayo talaga. Matitigas sa mga ulo ninyo. Paluin kita dyan eh. Oo, oo, oo. Huwag papaluin. Sasumbo kita sa bantay bata. Samantalang dati, gulpis, arado na kami. Walang bantay bata. Right? No, maybe not an absolute truth, but is it possible na tayo din, as parents, ang may kasalanan, kung bakit na-spoil sila? Kasi, di ba iba yung way ng pagpapalaki sa atin sa pagpapalaki sa kanila? So bakit tayo nag expect ng same result? So, so I, I guess mga kapatid, as a parent, as, as millennial ourselves, we all have assignments. Nalulungkot ako sa maraming families nowadays, Kasi kaya natin pag-usapan ang schedule. Kaya natin pag-usapan kung kailan tayo kakain. Kain tayo. O ano schedule mo bukas, anak? Gigisingin kita. Pero when it comes to conversations that really matter, we don't talk about it anymore. Naalala ko dati, kinakausap pa ako ng tatay ko kung sino dapat kong pakasalan. And I don't hear a lot of parents nowadays doing that. We're not talking about the stuff that really matters. Avoiding failures that they've fallen into in the past. Conversations becomes less and less. And I say this humbly and respectfully, if you have to correct them, mga kapatid, correct them. If you have to correct them, correct them. If you have to correct them, correct them. Fourth time is a charm. If you have to correct them, correct them. Pastor, eh, sasabihin lang na anak ko sa akin, eh, ako nga, ganito, ganito. No, you don't have to be perfect to correct your children. You have an authority given by God. And if you're really serious about this, fight for your family. If you really think na ito ang tama, fight for it. Alam mo, napansin ko sa maraming Christians, kasama na siguro ako doon, ang dali kasi natin kausap eh. Ang dali natin kausap. Basta maganda yun ah. Hindi, negative yan. Ay bawa, ah, uh, uh, ma'am, 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 dad, um, yaman ah. <laughs> ako nga, malang eh. Ma'am, dad, um, lately, kinukonvict ako ni Lord na, uh, pwede ba kayo ma-invite sa church? Puta kayo kahit isang Sunday lang. Balita ko yung pastor doon. Gwapo daw siya. Magayon siya. Magayon siya. Magayon siya. Magayon siya. Puta kayo sa chart. Sabi na nanay, hindi, masyado akong busy. Wala akong panahon sa mga ganyan. Okay. Okay po. <laughs> Ang dalihin natin kausap. Pero, tiyo mo, yung, ikaw bilang, bilang anak, pag hindi nakapunta yung parents mo sa graduation mo, galit ka. Tatampo ka. Kasi this is an important thing for me. Pero pinag-uusapan dito pagpunta sa graduation. 
Pero yung pag-i-invite, hindi lang pag-invite sa church yun, pag-invite papuntang langit yun. Pag na-hold up ka ba? Ano ba na-hold up ka? Sinabi sa'yo, hold up to! Ah! Wala po kong kahit ano. Ano meron kanya? Kaya hindi lang po nag-iisa. Naiwan ko lang to kanina eh. Pampawala ng antok namin mga anto. <laughs> Kasi po straight ako kanina eh. Ito lang po, mento. Sige, pwede na yan. Huwag ka ba? susunod ah. Huwag ka susunod. Baka manlalabang ka pa. Manlalabang ka ba kapag kinuha sa'yo mentos? Tapos pag napatay ka, isang bata napatay, nanlaban kasi kinuha yung mentos. Ah, wow, ang pangit ang balita ng pagkamatay mo. Pero kapag ang kinuha sa'yo is something really dear to you, cellphone nga lang, kapatid. Nakikipagpatayan tayo sa whole dapper. Tapos si Satan, kinuha na yung buong pamilya natin. Ayaw nating lumaban. Pagka talaga, kapatid, kung ako, tatay at nanay, ang suggestion ko lang, kapag sinabi ng anak niyo, ayaw kong pumunta sa church, ano ba gusto mo mangyari? Gusto mo ba siya mapalapi sa Diyos? Yes, pastor. Then fight for it. Tindigan mo yung tama. At sabi mo sa kanya, anak, hanggat nasa puder kita, no choice ka. Kasi I stand for what is right. I fight for what is right. Yes, I'm building something in church, but I have to fight for my family kasi hindi ako papayag na kinukuha ka ni Satanas right before my very eyes. Right? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, fight for our family. Ipaglaban natin na lumaki silang malapit sa Diyos. Ipaglaban natin, mga kapatid, na mga magulang natin ay makakilala sa Diyos. Pastor, ay ayaw sumamay. Naku, kapatid, kung kinakailangang araw-arawin mo pag invite Kasi, Kino-hold up tayo ni Satanas eh. Papayag ka ba? Kuhanin yung mga magulang natin. Dali niya sa amin sa impero. Pagbebentayin lang na ice tubig doon. Huwag ka pumayag. <laughs> Ipaglaban natin. Nasa katwira ka naman eh. Ipaglaban mo. <laughs> Hindi mo naman sila dinadala sa something na ikakapahamak nila eh. Kung kinakailangan mag-antay ka ng birthday mo, na birthday ko man naman, ipamana mo na sa akin to. Di ba walang car? <laughs> Basta makasama ka sa church. Then I will do it because I'm very serious. Kung kinakailangan araw-araw, kung kinakailangan magpatugtog ka ng Spotify sa bahay nyo, tapos walang ibang makakakunik na Bluetooth, ikaw lang. Para mapakinggan nyo yung boses. Ito, 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 ganito. Jesus is alive, CMNB. Search you sa Spotify. At kung kailangan mangyari yun, do it. Because if you're really serious about fighting your fam- for your family, do it. Magpatugtog ng Christian songs kahit hindi nila gusto. Kung ayaw nyo sumama sa akin, magpapatugtog muna tayong Christian song. Right? Pastor, unti-unti lang. E, ten years na, kapatid. Unti-unti pa din. Pastor, may ginagawa naman ako. Ano? Nagpipray ako. Nakot tayo tayo dyan. Build in fight. Amen? Alam mo, may, may testimony kanina. Narinig ko mismo. Eh, marami ng testimony ganito, by the way. Yung pera sila ay sumama, nagagalit pa talaga eh. Ginagawa nung anak, nagpapatugtog ng Christian song, walang magawa eh. Hindi marunong yung nani mag-operate ng Bluetooth and all. Naka, naka-disable pa yung Wi-Fi. <laughs> Papatugtog siya. Wala siyang kaalam-alam na nag invest na siya sa family niya. Alam mo, nung nagkaroon ng cellphone yung nanay niya, ang sabi ng nanay niya, anak, lagyan mo nga ito ng worship songs. Kala niya walang, walang investment. But because he's serious about fighting for his family, Yung nanay niya ngayon, Christian na. Nagsiserve na sa Lord. That's what I call fighting for your family. Nasa katwiran ka naman. Ipaglaban mo. Build and fight. Ano sabi ni Joshua? Joshua 24.15 If serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors, Serve beyond the Euphrates or the God of the Amorites in whose land you are living. In other words, sabi ni, ni Joshua, guys, kung, kung ayaw nyo sambayin yung Diyos ko, edi, basta maghanap kayo ng Diyos na sasambayin nyo, basta sigurado kayo may Diyos kayo sasambayin. Kung gusto nyo, Diyos sa Euphrates, go. Gusto nyo Diyos sa Amorites, go. Basta siguradong may Diyos. Pero sa dulo sabi niya, but as for me, pero kung ako tatanungin nyo, but as for me and my household, my family, my family, Oh my God. <laughs> but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Pastor, gusto ko naman, 
Actually, in reality, pastor, tumakas nga lang ako papuntang church ngayon. Di nga naman parents ko. Di nga alam na asawa ko na wala ako. Alam niya niya, bumili ako sa Victory Mall. Eh. Mapapabili pa tuloy ako mamaya. Pero ano yung mga kapatid, I understand, hindi ka talaga nila maintindihan. Pero paano mo papaintindi? Invite mo sa church nang maintindihan niya. At least ma-assure niya hindi ka pabaliw. Kasi kala niya baliw ka na eh. Kala na asawa na babaliw ka na. Nakikita ka niya, nagpe-pray sa kwarto. Nagtataas ka ng kamay, umiiyak ka habang tumatawas. Ano nangyari sa anak ko? Ano niya ata ito? At kapag in-invite mo sila, hindi ka talaga nila maiintindihan. Pero try mo silang ayahan sa church ng maunawaan nila. Ay, salamat sa Lord, hindi pa pala baliw ang anak mo. Magulat siya, siya rin baliw na rin pagdating na. <laughs> eh, pareho na kayo nagtataas ng kamay. Pareho na kayo nagpupuri sa ating Panginoon Diyos. Meron ka bang mga unsaved members of your family? Fight for your unsaved families, mga kapatid. Ipaglaban natin. Do everything that you can to save them. Kung kailangan kailangan araw-arawin, kung kailangan kailangan maging mabuting anak ako sa magulang ko para kumilala sila kay Lord, go. Kung kailangan kailangan na hindi ako naguhugas ng pinggan, maguhugas ako ng pinggan para makakilala ang parents ko, I will do it. Kung kailangan kailangan na mas magiging responsable ang asawa ko sa asawa ko para makasama ko siya sa church, I will do it. Whatever it takes. Huwag nating i-expect, mga kapatid, na ang nanay lang ang nagpe-pray para sa pamilya, ang tatay lang ang pray para sa pamilya. Huwag nating i-expect na ang preacher ang magsisave sa kanila, ang church ang magsisave sa kanila. We save them. We. We. We all save them. Amen? Ang sad reality is that ikaw mature na mature ka na sa Christian life, pero sila ni kilala, si Lord hindi kilala. That's reality. We have to wake up, mga kapatid. Because God has a great plan for your life. So question, is your family worth fighting for? Sabi nila, the Filipinos are worth fighting for, but is your family worth fighting for? Yeah. So, if your family is worth fighting for, then save them. Then fight for them. Pastor, mukhang wala na, mag na kami mag It may look like it's over. But fight for your marriage. Huwag kang basta gumip up. Amen. It may look like sobrang daming drama sa pamilya ninyo, but it's not yet over. God still wants to use you to build and to fight. Do the best that you can, mga kapatid. Do the, do the best that you know how. Fight for your wife, for your husband, for your sons, and for your daughters, all for the glory of God. And command the devil, you have authority, command the blessing, uh, the, the devil to lose you and set you free. And believe God for miracle, believe God for breakthrough, believe God for forgiveness. By the way, kung may mga kapit, hindi ka pa pinapatawad, by all means, mga kapatid, do everything that you can para mawala yung, yung sakit na yan and forgive those people. Because Satan wants you to be miserable. But God wants to build that relationship, restore that relationship, and once you reconcile, it's not too late. Amen? To make our families better. It's not too late. Amen? Maybe buong pamilya na kayo serve kay God, but still we have families out there that needs Jesus. Kami buong family na kami, but still we have families na hindi pa nakakilala sa Panginoon. So we all have an assignment. Let's do our best. Amen? To save them. While we are building We're fighting for them. Build and fight. Tayo po tayong lahat mga kapatid.